Hey guys, Peter here to tell you about the latest from Pierce the Veil Jaws of Life out February 10th on Fearless Records. This album has 12 tracks, 42 minutes in length, and this is the band's fifth full length studio album. They are an American rock post hardcore band. As far as the design goes, I love the movement of the album. This record is entertaining, it's engaging, it's fluid, it's dynamic, it's diverse, it's all of the above. It's an album that's built almost like a book, a good one, one that you, once you start reading, you don't want to put it down, you just want to flip the pages and go from chapter to chapter to see exactly where this journey is going to take you. And this album plays itself in that same perspective. This doesn't mean that the individual songs can stand alone and don't have strength to be on their own because they do have that ability. But when you put them together in the context of the album, I feel like you're able to squeeze a lot more juice out of this orange. You're able to understand not just where you're coming from, but where you're going, taking the learning experiences that each and every single song gives you and build upon those as you find your way through this incredible journey of going across these 12 tracks. As far as the sound is concerned, this is a very rich sounding album with great production. And I think that rich sound really comes from the quality of the production behind it because it allows you to see all the different layers, all the different texture that this album offers, but still present them in a very subtle way. There's never a point on this album where you feel like things are becoming a little bit abrasive, that the record is jumping and it's being a little bit too much in your face. This album has those moments, but it does it in a very subtle way. So there's still a distance between what is happening on the record sound wise and where the listener is. And one of the main core elements of this record when it comes to the sound is definitely the guitars. They drive the experience, but not in a uniform uh, linear manner across each and every single song. Having said that, there are some consistent elements that you're going to see throughout the record becoming a little bit of the red line guitar wise that connects this album. And that is the fuzziness of the guitars. Not to say that every song has it, but it is one element that stays consistently above water when you navigate these 12 tracks. You're gonna find them here and there and you're able to connect the dots as you're moving along. But between that fuzziness or below that fuzziness, I should say, there is a lot of diversity on the guitar sound. Some pop rock elements, some uh, just clean pop elements that allow a subtle nature of sound to really permeate and then acoustic elements that bring a different atmosphere that infuse some melancholy into the tracks that bring the mood even lower. So this is an album that from a guitar sound point of view, it has a lot to offer. There's a lot for the listener to process and this diversity of execution allows one element to stay consistent but still diverse in terms of how you perceive it and how you process it. Really important in order to give movement to an album that at times feels like it's not moving at all. Another element that has an important role, but perhaps a secondary role, is the drums. I like the drum sound on this album, and the drum sound on this album kind of goes where the songs are going. It's never in your face, it's pretty much in the back seat of the car as far as where you're going with it or, or who's driving the experience, and in some tracks comes a little bit more to the forefront in order to connect the overall atmosphere that the track has coming from the keyboards and synths and electronic elements, connecting those with that more fuzzier side of the guitars and sometimes more eclectic side of the guitars. So the drums on this record really play a role of almost a, a, a bass. They're a bass line that works well in becoming the glue that unifies these two pieces that are coming together, but not, they're not necessarily in parallel with one another. So I like that experience from the drums because it adds also diversity to the sound experience and it has that same subtle impact in everything else that is happening. When the songs become a little bit more intense, when the volume becomes a little bit louder, you feel the drums having a little bit more power and you feel them jumping into the forefront. And songs that are a little bit more melancholic and songs that have a more stripped down effect, the drums are there just to create that necessary beat, to create that that footprint that allows the vocals predominantly to walk upon and then the guitars to come in and fill in the gaps. Great work on the drums, once again, very subtle as everything else is on this record, but important in terms of creating the dynamics that these tracks have. Now, vocally, this is a super strong album from start to finish. Vic is on point. His voice is phenomenal and his voice and his range and his ability to understand what he wrote, what the lyrics are about, the emotion that you want to portray, uh, it, it really comes to life and it's very easy to see to the naked eye. 
This is an album that really doesn't hide itself vocally, but it gives you the opportunity to see different perspectives and different elements coming together in order for the diversity of sound and the diversity of execution that we see in the guitars and then predominantly in the overall experience to also be present in the vocal performance. Not a one size fits all from start to finish. This album has a lot of movement vocally. It's very rich as well. And this is important for the overall experience to while being diverse on one hand, still feeling very balanced on the other. Making the album have strength in the individual songs, but perhaps a little bit more towards the collective. And the beauty of this album is that it allows you to lose yourself within it, almost escaping your reality and engaging yourself with theirs. That is the winning formula of this album, and I feel like this is why this album is gonna work for the fans of Pierce the Veil, because you can press play and forget about the world around you and just engage yourself with the experience and where this album will take you. It's gonna be an interesting journey. I think you're gonna enjoy it. Now, as far as favorite songs are concerned, I wanna start off with Dem the Man, Save the Empire. Great fuzziness on the guitar sound. Uh, the vocals matching a little bit of that experience as well, a little bit rugged, uh, allowing the chorus to be more explosive and grounding the song a little bit more in the verses. So this is a track that definitely has two different plateaus. What you feel and what you hear in the verses is very lower in terms of the experience than that more that intense burst of energy that happens in the chorus. This creates ebbs and flows within the track and it gives the chance for movement to exist. Now, even though the pattern of verses and chorus is there, the song itself doesn't really develop patterns within it because the verses from verse to verse, there are changes musically and vocally, and even the chorus or how you build to the chorus also changes. So this is a song that at first glance feels like it has a defined pattern, a defined path, but the more you listen to it, the more you realize that the, the song actually has a lot of internal ebbs and flows, not just the ebbs and flows that you get from verses to chorus. Next we have So Far, So Fake. The guitars uh, give the backdrop of this track and allowing the vocals to lead it. This is a song where the vocals are the protagonist. They take control, they take full range of where the song is gonna go. The drums bridge the gap between where the guitar started and where the vocals are. The drums kind of come in, find a way to squeeze themselves in between and connect the dots. Hold the hands of those two elements, allowing the song to come together, to have a little bit of substance, but still uh, feel that at times it, it has this, this raw uh, organic approach to it and how it's being performed and it also in how it's being delivered. It increases the volume in the chorus, the intensity also increases in the chorus. As you would expect, you kind of need that more explosive approach so that that part of the song stands out and allows the track to be more memorable, to be more hooky. Because the verses are very melancholic in this track. You feel like the mood or, or the air has been taken out of the balloon at times when you're in the verses. It's almost like you're, you're trying to swim, uh, or you're, you're trying to fight the tide to get up and, and, and catch your breath. And then once you get into that chorus, you finally are able to breathe, you finally are able to break that surface. So that's an important element that this track has because it not always gave you that idea that that's exactly how it's gonna go. So it has very distinct polar opposite feels, uh, moods, but this, somehow they were able to connect them really well to make the song fun and to make the song a mini roller coaster ride within an overall roller coaster ride that it is this record. Last but not least, and definitely last because this is the last song on the album, Fractures, featuring Chloe Moriondo. This is a duet and it's a phenomenal ballad, stripped down duet right at the end of the record. This is an album, by the way, that doesn't get lighter or it doesn't get uh, disconnected as you move along. As strong as it is at the beginning because the singles are right at the opening of the record, the bottom end of the album is as strong as that opening. Both So Far So Fake and Fractures are the two last songs on this record and that really tells you the overall strength that the album holds. Fractures is a very unique song in the overall context of the album, not just because it's a duet, not just because it's a ballad, but the mood that it sets forward, how you feel towards it, is the most stripped down song on record. It's really about the vocals. The sound behind it, everything else behind it, is just there to create a scenery. It's just there as a placeholder. Because it's really about Chloe, it's really about Vic, about how they're gonna sing this song, how they're gonna interact with one another, and how their voices are gonna complement one another. This song really needed 
to be a duet in order to work, in order for you to feel the emotions of the song, in order for you to feel the emotions of the protagonists, not only that are singing the song, but that are built within the lyrical content of the song. A very emotional track that could only come at the end of the album, because it really feels a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end, but also a sense of finality to the overall experience that the album gave you. This is it, Pierce the Veil, Jaws of Life, out February 10th on Fearless Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.